Yo, Elliot, this is a business related question. My business partner and I started a podcast a few months back geared towards optimizing your lifestyle. Recently, he's been very distracted and not as engaged or putting in effort. I've really been running the show myself and doing most of the background work. Just yesterday, I found out his family is getting evicted and he has to pull away from the podcast for an undetermined amount of time. This leads us to a crossroads. Either we pause the show or I continue doing it by myself. I'm not okay with either of these options because number one, pausing the show just seems like a bad look and we have some momentum going. Part of me feels like we owe our followers good content and proper delivery. And number two, if I were to continue building the podcast myself until he gets his situation in order and then he comes back at a later time, I'm also not okay with someone completely reaping the benefits of work I've done. I would love your insight on this. Am I looking at this wrong? Should I not be looking at these two extreme options? If not, what may be another way of uh, this situation can work out? Well, I will, before I get into what I think, <laughs> right, uh, I would like to offer something that I've been practicing more myself. In fact, this whole program has been about it, so I've been learning this over the past several years, but just, you know, really dialing it in more, meaning uh, in, in the respect of not trusting myself, right? From the beginning of this program, two years ago when I started it, the whole essence of it was to teach you how to be, right, which is where revelation comes from, right? When we stop trying to figure things out, we stop trying to think things through, we stop trying to like feel about it or mull over it or worry about things or come up with different scenarios. And we put it, lay it at the cross, my mother would say. She'd say, lay it at the cross, right? Let go and let God. I'm learning more about, how, I'm learning more and more how to do that. I've been doing it and it's been amazing. In other words, doing it with everything, right? And a lot of times I'd wait till I'm at a crossroads like you before I say, you know what, I'm allow God to reveal this to me. So I would just put that out there uh, before I get into, you know, what Elliot's ego has to say about it. Allow the Lord to guide you. Allow it to be revealed to you. Ask and you shall receive. You got to ask. And so when I say ask, it also means listen, right? Put it out there. Ask God. Say a prayer to God. Say, I'm at a crossroads right now. I'm not sure. What is your will for me, Lord? What is your will for my life? And what is your will for these actions that I'm taking in order to glorify you? This is how I found that it's, it's the answer comes with more clarity if I clear it up in my own mind specifically that it is for the glory of the Lord. If, every, if what I'm doing is ultimately for the glory of the Lord, God will carry it for me. I watched a video the other day with a, a young lady. She was a sister. And she says, um, when I say sister, not like, not black girl. She was uh, uh, in, a, in a convent, a young lady. And she said that because she had like other things that like other family members and that, that like worried about her because she gave up her whole life to go be a cloistered nun. And she said this line, and I was like, it, it, I, I dug it. I was like, that's dope. She said that Jesus told her that if you take care of my things, I'll take care of yours. That was like mind-blowing. Just imagine God is saying, hey, Anthony, you take care of my things, and I'll take care of yours. Well, what is that? Well, God wants us to take care of his things by following the Ten Commandments, right? Praying, right? Honoring God and worshiping him, right? Through prayer. I think that's the one thing, man, that is, is I struggle with. Not really that I struggle with, but it's taking me time to understand. Is to be in prayer. And prayer means, in a lot of ways, listening, right? Prayer is a two-way conversation. So, in other words, God's saying, take care of my things by pray. And I'll take care of yours by answering. So, I'm going to throw that out there for you. Now, let me give you some worldly Worldly advice, right? That's my spiritual advice for the day, right? Ask the Lord to reveal it to you. And you can only, things are only revealed when we're being, right? I've made enough videos and spoke to you guys enough about the four quadrants, right? 
which require which include king warrior magician lover right magician is thinking lover is feeling warriors doing king is being right and what is that sit robert moore says that where the king is order ensues the king doesn't create order he is an order ensues what is ising ising is being right be it's the whole if i can get you guys to really start to embody this being then i've i've really done my job in this program right and as you go through the lessons you hear me say these things over and over again so i don't always repeat them in these q and a's but it's about being all this stuff unfolds all these kinds of problems even in uh in um the book 33 strategies of war by uh i can't remember the author now crazy because I reference his books all the time. There's one of the strategies in the 33 Strategies of War where he, he says one of the be best strategies in conflict is to do nothing. And he speaks about like a Chinese general, right? And some like old battle. And these guys understood it, right? They understood it, right? These are like uh, strategies of war, right? Robert Greene, thanks, Matt. And he says one of the best things to do in battle is nothing. Do nothing and see what unfolds. Okay, enough philosophy for the day, right? You want to know, should I just keep going or should I pause? And I think you know the answer to that, but you're resisting it. I don't think you have it in you to pause right now. You say that it would look bad. It might, right? And listen, this is a business, right? Business is business. That's why I say keep family and business completely separated, right? Like two dicks and no chick. Find yourself in serious shit, right? Biggie said that, right? I'm not a fan of working with friends. <laughs> I, I'm not a fan of working with anybody, to be completely honest, right? I, because of the same type of situations. Maybe that's a personality flaw for me, but I'm much happier being alone, right? I don't want to depend on anybody. And if I'm depending on anybody, it's because they work for me so I can tell them what I want rather than we're partners. I'm not a good partner, guys. <laughs> Good partner with my wife because I'm in charge. <laughs> but I'm not a good partner guy. Equal, the whole equality thing don't work so well with me. I Because I don't want to depend on people. And I don't want anybody dependent on me either. Because I can be unreliable sometimes, right? Like, for example, your friend. Like, something could happen to my family and I have to, I have to, I have to pull back. And it's like, well, now, I, you know, I feel bad. So I do my best not to do anything with anybody, to be completely honest. I've thought about doing podcasts and stuff before, and I'm like, yeah, this, I think about people. I have friends, right? And I'm like, hey, it would be pretty cool if we did a podcast together. But then I'm like, eh, nah, nah, nah. Doesn't mean I'm right. I'm just telling you the way I am. Um, so you say that it won't look good. You're right. You owe yourself to your, your, your clients, right? They're the ones that you're working for, right? Like, I work for you guys, right? I can't pause this because because somebody who works for me is, is not doing their job, right? I owe it to them, right? And in a way, whatever you're doing right here, I, I, you have this sense of obligation to them. And these are the people that will ultimately be your customers, right? And so you, there's an exchange. That relationship is very important with your potential customers, right? So you want to maintain that trust. He says, a part of me feels like we owe our followers good content and proper delivery. If you sense that and it's good business practice, because you also got to ask yourself, what's the ROI on that, right? Right? Like, what's the ROI on it? And that's just something that I've had to come to grips with over time because you, know, you could very easily get caught up in content creation and it's like, but what am I, what's my return on this? Why am I doing this, right? Like, I don't mean to share my business strategy with you guys but you see what I do here right there's a lot I, everything I do I think maximize the ROI so I think number one is out of the question and I don't think it's necessary you don't need a partner to run a podcast you can run a podcast by yourself a lot of people do it number two is where I think you can uh, there can be some personal growth I think there's room for maturity with number two. So number two, he says, if I were to continue to build a podcast and he gets his situation in order and then he comes back at a later time, I'm not okay with somebody reaping the benefits of the work I've done. 
So there are two ways to sort of approach that where growth, there's possibility for growth, right? And it depends on you. You choose. Number one, there's possibility for growth by having an uncomfortable conversation with your bro. Hey, I get it. I pray for your family. I hope things work out. I really do. I'm going to keep carrying the torch while you're, work, while you're working things out. Take your time. Do whatever you have to do. But I would like for us to restructure our agreement when you do come back. I'm sure you understand because I'll be carrying the bulk of the load. And so, you know, you just you explain to him, you, you tell him what you're telling me. I'm a little concerned because uh, because of what's happening and I want to have you here, but we'll just have to renegotiate our contract. And if you've been with me long enough, you've heard me say, don't go into business with anybody without a contract. Even if it's written on a freaking napkin, you have to have written contracts when you're doing work with people that way the boundaries are laid out and clear otherwise especially when it comes to friends then it's like it's, it's all wishy-washy and gray you don't want wishy-washy gray stuff especially with people that you have a friendship with right he's your friend that makes it even worse when you say partner i don't know but you should have a contract or if you don't, this is a good time to talk about that, right? It don't have to be a lawyer contract. It don't have to be a big thing with a whole lot of fancy legalese. It just has to be like bullet points, right? Okay, we agree on this. We agree on that. We agree if, And then you have to have like if situations, if then, if then, if then, if then. Okay, cool. Because if you had an if then about what's going on right now, you, would, you wouldn't have this problem. If... One of us has to drop out, then X, Y, Z. If one of us has to take a break, then X, Y, Z. Before Men, listen to me. Before getting into any kind of business with anybody, any kind of project with anybody, you got to lay down the, the rules of engagement. And you have to have these if-thens, if-thens. Because things, things happen. Right? Your friend, his family's getting evicted and he's got things to do. You have to have an if then, if then. If you don't have that now, then you need to do it now, right? If you didn't have it then, you need to do it now. That's my if then for you. So there's that, which is cool. You can do that. I would probably do that. That would more than likely be my choice. Or you can be benevolent. You can have mercy, <laughs> right? Isn't that what Christ teaches us? Have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and the whole world, right? Have mercy. Have mercy on your friend because he's getting evicted. Things are, things are not good for him right now. And, may, and now I would... I would tell him I'm having mercy on him, just like God does the same thing with us. God lets you know, hey, I'm having mercy on you right now. This is, this is a merciful act right now. So you might want to say to your friend, hey, I understand what's going on with you. Your families are in my prayer. I want you to know that this is going to be kind of tough for me to kind of carry this. But, you know, I thought about it, and I was thinking that you, maybe it'd be better if we went our separate ways, but because I am merciful, <laughs> maybe don't say it like that. You know, or you could even use yourself an example, you know, say I, I've seen so many times where God has had mercy in my life and I just feel called to extending this to you right now, right? That way you don't, you don't sound like a, <laughs> like a, 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 you know, like you're over him because you're not, but you are extending a charity. You're extending mercy. So, but even if you extend mercy, you can extend mercy, but that'll be the last time. <laughs> you tell them that too. Like, hey, I'm going to extend some mercy to you, but this ain't going to happen again. Because from here on out, we got a contract. You see? Either that or just go your own, life, own, your own way totally like I would. But podcasts, I guess you need other people to talk to. Unless you're like me, I just talk to myself. I let you guys send me questions. And I just rant. That's what I do. That's, what I'm, that's, that's my gift is I talk to myself. I'm just talking to the camera here, right? 
I know you guys are here, but notice we ain't talking. It's not a conversation. So, but that's just me. I'm not, you know, I'm not telling you to be like me. Anyway, dude, you got, you have a couple options there. I think you know what to do. And I think uh, you probably sense it more strongly now. So do what you got to do, dude. Done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. My team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me. So DM me the word king on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.